am in love with this. I mean, don't you get it? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most underrated teen movies of the 2000s. Do all these schools want me? Well, where should I go? Well, you'll figure it out. Maybe I should just tell them to stick it. For this list, we'll be looking at the best but most overlooked films geared towards adolescents that were released between 2000 and 2009. Did we miss any of your underrated favourites? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Loser. In 1982, Amy Heckerling directed Fast Times at Ridgemont High, notably followed by Clueless in 1995. These films are such huge teen movie staples that it's hard to believe that her 2000s offering Loser got swept under the rug. I don't know. Maybe I should come home. I don't think I belong here. Starring American Pie's Jason Biggs and Mina Suvari, the college set remake of The Apartment sees Biggs' character Paul trying to win over his classmate Dora Diamond. The only thing is, she's embroiled in an ongoing affair with their professor. I mean, I have this feeling of Blitz just sitting here sewing. Do you feel it too? What made you change your mind about me being here? Dora, can we turn down the intensity just a notch? I was just thinking how beautiful you looked while you were being quiet. All of the movie's characters feel realistically flawed in a way that's refreshing, while its aesthetics provide the perfect window into the cultural transition between the late 90s and the early 2000s. The moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. Hey, no, don't you get whimsical on me. Number 19, Eurotrip. Next stop, Berlin. Ah, the 2000s, when dial-up was still relatively commonplace and people were far more naive about online romance. Enter Eurotrip, a movie about an American teenager who learns that the long-term internet pal he's been referring to as Mike is actually a woman named Mika. After a blunder gets him on Mika's bad side, he decides that the best way to make it up to her is to fly to Europe and make amends face to face. And Jamie, if you come with us, I'm sure there's a ton of great stuff that you can see. It's right along the way. We can go to Denmark. I love Denmark. We gotta hit Amsterdam. Definitely. Ah. Some of the jokes in Eurotrip may not have aged well, but it remains a pretty pitch-perfect representation of global ignorance nonetheless. And don't tell Scotty, but we think Scotty Doesn't Know may be one of the best original songs written for a teen movie. Scotty doesn't know, oh, Scotty doesn't know, oh, so don't tell Scotty, Scotty doesn't know, Scotty doesn't know. Number 18, Crazy Beautiful. From Romeo and Juliet to Jack and Rose, it's hard to deny the power of a good opposites attract story. Crazy Beautiful is no different focusing its narrative on a lower-class Mexican-American teenager doing everything he can to excel, and the defiant upper-class girl he ends up falling for. When I'm with you, I just, I never know what's gonna happen. It's weird because my life is so planned out. What makes this movie special is its complete dedication to its characters and their backgrounds. Crazy Beautiful never shies away from airing out its protagonists' differences, forcing them to consider how their radically different upbringings have made them who they are. This nuanced love story is all exceptionally acted by Jay Hernandez and Kirsten Dunst, but it's largely overlooked in favor of their more popular projects. I don't give a about anything else right now, okay? Midterms, grades, Annapolis, your father. I want to be with you. Number 17, Band Slam. From 2006 to 2008, Vanessa Hudgens blew us away as Gabriela Montez in the hugely popular high school musical films. But in 2009, she appeared in another musical rom-com that didn't get nearly the same amount of buzz. The five is silent. Band Slam is about a burgeoning rock group fronted by the talented Charlotte, who hopes to defeat her ex in an upcoming Battle of the Bands. Trials, tribulations, and a love story emerge, but after eventually teaming up with Hudgens' Sam, the five is silent, it seems that the group may have a chance. The only thing that matters is seeing you guys kick some serious butt tonight. And you're singing Phil's song. David Bowie also appears as himself in what would be his final performance on film, excluding posthumous releases. In spite of its failure at the box office, Band Slam was surprisingly well liked by critics, earning an 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. That was, they were ridiculously good! You, who are you? You are oh, 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 oh. Where did you come oh. from? 
Number 16, Brick. Ryan Johnson has made quite the name for himself in recent years, writing and directing Knives Out movies, as well as Star Wars The Last Jedi. In spite of his fame, Johnson's directorial debut, Brick, is still unknown to most. I'm gonna walk from this brain. I'm gonna drop it. Walk from it? Drop it? It's your thick, Brendan. Yes, I am. The teen noir stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt as a reclusive high schooler determined to solve a murder mystery that hits too close to home. Much like Ryan Johnson's later works, the movie has wonderfully smart dialogue, adequately high stakes, and an undeniable charm. No Zippo. 1250 Vista Blanca, the ink blotter on the desk in the den of the basement of the house with the tacky mailbox. Granted, Brick is a bit more serious in tone than the average teen movie, but it strikes the perfect balance between its hardball detective story and its high school setting, making for a uniquely compelling watch. Yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah? There's a thesaurus in the library, yeah, is under Y. Good, I'll wait. Number 15, Sydney White. We know Disney's live-action remakes are good, but we think Sydney White deserves some love of its own. The college-set comedy brings new life to the centuries-old story of Snow White. Let me give you one tip, Sydney. I'm the last person you want to mess with. No, you're the first. Sure, it may not have gotten the same attention as its Shakespearean predecessor, 10 Things I Hate About You, or even 2003's Peter Pan but it's still an enchanting and worthwhile adaptation. Did the Avengers give up when the Black Knight sprayed New York with that foam that left everybody stuck to the ground? No! No. With the help of a criminal glue specialist, they freed everyone! I'm your criminal glue specialist! Indeed, the film's biggest draw isn't even its source, but rather its star, Amanda Bynes. The actress gives a comedic performance fit for a powerhouse, keeping us engaged even when the film's writing isn't necessarily up to snuff. Throw a football like Matt Leinard, fearlessly conquer fraternity bathrooms, and clean up nice to boot. <laughs> well, I'm more of a Pete Manning, Leinard to lefty. Marry me. Number 14, Bend It Like Beckham. Even if you're not a fan of soccer, it's hard not to be a fan of Bend It Like Beckham. Mrs. Bamry, you must be very proud of your daughter. Not at all. She shouldn't be running around with all these men showing her bare legs to 70,000 people. She's bringing shame on the family, and you three shouldn't encourage her. The coming-of-age dramedy focuses on Jess, a British Indian Sikh with traditional parents and a passion for the sport. Predictably, these two things do not mix, and Jess must sneak around with her new friend Jules in order to play the game she loves. Where do they think you are? At work, I think I've got a job at HMV. Blimey, that's not on. Indian girls aren't supposed to play football. Although the two protagonists are ostensibly straight, the film has gained a devoted and loving following of LGBTQIA women who see themselves in the pair. The film has also been praised for its portrayal of its South Asian protagonist, whose culture is consistently respected even as she forges her own path. That's can your father ask for? At least I've taught her full Indian dinner. The rest is up to God. <laughs> <laughs> Number 13, John Tucker Must Die. Some of the best teen movies also have the best revenge plots. John Tucker Must Die is one more strong example in this noteworthy subgenre. John Tucker, there's only one guy out there for me. But you are not him. Damn. You are gonna be a legend. This comedic tale follows three teen girls who realize that unbeknownst to them, they share a boyfriend. Determined to get back at him for his infidelity, they team up with new girl Kate and decide to destroy him. Ooh, who do I make my check out to? He's totally indestructible. We give him herpes, they give him an award. Fake herpes, mom. No, it was a whole reputation thing. It's a long story. Sure, yeah, the old fake herpes reputation thing. It's endlessly entertaining, with a punchy script and a number of surprising plot twists. Sure, Jenny McCarthy was nominated for a Razzie for her performance in the film, but that performance just adds to the film's pure dumb fun. At the end of the day, isn't that what everyone truly wants out of a teen comedy? Ooh, a little preview? Uh, no, n I want you to wear them. Number 12, Aquamarine. Don't you see? You just proved to him that love exists. It can be hard to find a teen film that champions platonic love as much as Aquamarine does. 
Though it's not without its romantic subplots, the real heart of this story is the female friendship between Hayley and Claire, and their new fantastical mermaid companion, Aquamarine. If it sounds a little cheesy, that's because maybe it is. But honestly, a little cheese never hurt anyone. In fact, the movie's charm and innocence are its greatest assets. They provide a lovable and light-hearted escape from reality, making us believe in the existence of mermaid magic, even if momentarily. Race you to the pier. No, wait! Let's just float a while. I want to enjoy this. Has this been the best summer ever or what? Number 11, Sky High. With Marvel and DC constantly putting out new films and series, it's easy to feel superhero fatigue. Fortunately, there's one superhero movie we'll never tire of. The 2005 teen comedy, Sky High. He's strong. I'm strong? He's super strong. Its plot may be a little predictable, while the costumes and characters are delightfully of their time. But when the story is as fun to watch as this one, none of that even matters. Plus, Wonder Woman actress Linda Carter plays the school's principal, while Birds of Prey Mary Elizabeth Winstead is the big bad. That is little girl. <laughs> Told you never to call me that! We're not surprised that critics and audiences alike have only grown more fond of the movie since its initial release. We couldn't be happier that it's finally getting some of the praise it deserves. Why don't we just call them what they really are, Josie? Heroes. Number 10, Slackers. Slackers was another gross-out movie, trailing on the heels of American Pie, complete with a surprisingly solid cast that includes Laura Prepon, Jason Schwartzman, and Jason Segel. Hit by a truck, you know, I got a, I got a busted tibia. Uh, a rib cage, it's very tender. My testicle turned blue. Why don't you, uh, why don't you drop your trousers and we'll examine them. Hey! But while those movies had some semblance of a heart at their centres, Slackers is a full-on stoner comedy grossness. So your mileage may vary with this one. Graphic jokes abound, as do classless things like extended loud farts. It's certainly not Shakespeare, but sometimes you just want to unwind, have a few drinks, and watch a stupid movie. And when a day like that comes around, you could do a lot worse than Slackers. I'm tired. I know, we do. Move over, let's go to bed. Move over. Uh, how about you sleep on the couch? Okay. Number nine, Manic. I'm working on my self esteem. Thank you, Trace. Lyle, you want to try it? Why are you here? Manic is like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, only with a cast of teenagers and young adults. It stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Lyle Jensen, a smart young man prone to violent outbursts who is sent to a psychiatric facility. While there, he gets to know his fellow patients on a personal level, including love interest Tracy, who is played by Zoe Deschanel. It's like I'm surrounded with badness, like an aura or something. And here. Happens everywhere. It's a beautiful movie, centered around many powerful and well-acted characters, each of whom have a interesting story, and it's all shot with a gritty, low-budget documentary style that helps convey a sense of realism and humanity. It's poetic, it's difficult, but above all, it's gorgeous. Why are you here, man? Why are you alive? Do you want to be alive? Life is a struggle, Lyle. That's it. Number eight, Stick It. Stick It is like a spiritual successor to Bring It On. It was written and directed by the same writer, Jessica Bendiger, and it follows the squad of a physical sport, only this time it's gymnastics instead of cheerleading. Glad to see you haven't lost your love of accuracy, Joanne. Well, at least I didn't make it all the way to Worlds. And, um, uh, choke. <laughs> Missy Peregrim plays the rebellious Hayley Graham, who is enrolled in an elite gymnastics program and trained by the always brilliant Jeff Bridges. We have no idea what Jeff Bridges is doing in a movie like this, but who cares? He's awesome. Pop in your clutch. Hayley, I'm not gonna tell you to play it safe because I'd be wasting my time. You wanna throw hard tricks, throw hard tricks. When you wanna control them, See me. The movie is good, light-hearted entertainment, and it's filled with some incredible gymnastics action that awes and dazzles. 
If you like to bring it on, you should definitely check out Stick It. Deja jealous, Joanne? <laughs> Do you have anything to say to me? Yeah. Who taught you to control your landing? Some guy. Number seven, Charlie Bartlett. Maybe the cheerleaders call you a scumbag behind your back. Maybe it's because the school's got you placed on the remedial track and your teachers are really good at making you feel like an idiot. Charlie Bartlett pleases audiences with a deft blend of comedy and heavy drama. The late Anton Yelchin stars as Charlie Bartlett, a rich private school student who transfers to a public school and begins doling out advice and prescription substances to the student body. Meanwhile, he must battle the school's principal, who struggles with substance use disorder and is wonderfully played by Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> What have we here? Nothing, we're just messing around. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bibbins, Mr. Uh, you, get to class. Downey's casting here is a stroke of utter brilliance, and his advice and presence lends the movie melancholic themes and a sorrowful heart. Got to the point where I felt I was ready to stop, so I did. How's that going for you? Some days are better than others. Charlie Bartlett is a comedy with meaning, depth, and complexity. Number six, accepted. They all paid first semester's tuition? Oh yeah, 10,000 bucks a piece. I stopped counting after the first 100 checks. That's $74 million. It's a million dollars, Glenn. Yeah, and human dollars. Accepted takes the college coming of age story and spins it with a unique twist. It follows Justin Long's Bartleby Gaines, a high school prankster who is rejected from every college he applies to. To gain admiration from his strict father, he decides to create his own post-secondary institution, which is soon populated with a host of outcasts, including a typically hilarious Jonah Hill. Ask me about my wiener! <laughs> so. Ask me about my wiener! It adds to an overarching story to the usual college shenanigans, and it gives the movie a ticking clock as we wait patiently for Bartleby's scheme to blow up in his face. Pair an interesting twist on the college movie with some truly gifted comedic actors, and you have a solid way to pass 90 minutes. Hey, whoa, 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 Tex. What the hell are you guys doing? What do you mean? We're making the room bigger. Number five, The Girl Next Door. Are you, are you serious? No. Uh, <laughs> no. No, never gonna happen. Uh-uh. The whole package. The girl next door is deceiving. The story follows a high school student who falls for his hot new neighbor, only to discover that she is an admired adult film actress. And while it was marketed as a raunchy teen comedy in the vein of American Pie and Slackers, it is actually a surprisingly sweet story concerning prejudices, the loss of innocence, and falling in love. I don't belong here. What do you, what do you, what do you mean? What about, what about starting over? This is what I am. Emil Hirsch and Alicia Cuthbert have cracking chemistry, and the movie is littered with a notable cast that includes now famous and acclaimed actors like Paul Dano and Timothy Oliphant. How far are you willing to go? Hmm? How much do you really care about her? Joking, man. Don't let the marketing fool you. There's a lot more to the girl next door than dirty jokes and Alicia Cuthbert looking sexy. Number four, Ghost World. Don't, don't turn around. What? Why? Don't turn around. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> you guys, I can't believe we made it. Yeah. You graduated high school. How totally amazing. We don't think it's hyperbole to call Ghost World one of the greatest teen dramas of all time. It's a movie for both teenagers and adults, and it provides a rich tapestry of a story that will leave viewers in absolute tatters. It stars Thora Birch as Enid and Scarlett Johansson as Rebecca, two directionless teenagers fresh out of high school who decide to prank a lonely man, played with heartbreaking brilliance by Steve Buscemi. Well, I can't relate to humanity either, but I don't think it's completely hopeless. Well, it's not completely hopeless for you. What results is a touching but ultimately tragic story about the complications of growing up, social isolation, and the tempting call of direction and ultimate meaning. Few teen movies are as mature as Ghost World, or as good. He doesn't even need that wheelchair, he's just totally lazy. <laughs> that rules! 
No, it really doesn't. You'll see. You get totally sick of all the creeps and losers and weirdos. But those are our people. Yeah, well. Number three, whip it. The last time I wore skates, they, they had Barbies on them. You know, none of us knew our ass from an elbow pad when we started. You should come to tryouts on Tuesday. You have to be 21. You're 21, right? Two. I'm, I'm 22. Whip It shares its DNA with many outcast, falls in love with a niche sport movies, including Stick It. Heck, even the titles are similar. That said, it has enough individual charm and personality to transcend its rather tropey story. Whip It was directed with aplomb and infectious energy by Drew Barrymore, and it stars Elliot Page as a misfit who finds meaning and acceptance in a roller derby league. He came in second out of two teams. While the movie features dizzying camera work and frenetic derby action, it's a deeply personal coming-of-age story, based around writer and professional derby skater Sean Across's real life. With this movie, Drew Barrymore proved that she had learned a thing or two from all the esteemed directors that she's worked with over the years. Hello? Ruthless, it's the championship. Don't even tell me you can't make it. I can't. Is it her mom? Let me talk to her. I'll knock her out. Number two, Orange County. And of course, Arthur is on the board, so... Uh... Excuse me. Sorry. Sean, have you seen my piss? My parole officer called. He wants that piss. You really can't go wrong with Colin Hanks and Jack Black. Colin stars as an overachieving high school student named Sean, who desperately wants to attend Stanford to study under his favourite writer. However, he is rejected after his airheaded guidance counsellor mixes up his transcript with that of a lesser student. No, I didn't. Yes, you did! No, I didn't. Yes, you did! You just don't throw accusations around here. This is nobody's fault. Yes, it is! It's your fault! Determined, he, his girlfriend, and his stoner brother scheme of various ways to get into Stanford without a legitimate acceptance. But this little chump's gonna cry wee 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 all the way to the biznack. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Ah! The script is smart while still finding time for wacky antics, and Sean is a surprisingly deep and complex protagonist. Therein lies the magic of Orange County. It's a teen romp that still finds time for things like logic, character, and emotion. It's refreshing, much like a juicy orange. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, saved. Oh, you're so lucky, Hilary Faye. Yeah, I could have had a Lexus Gold Edition, you know. Wow, Roland is blessed with such a thoughtful sister. In countries like China, Hilary Faye probably would have been killed at birth. Yeah. And then where would you be, Roland? China. Saved is much heavier than most teen comedies. While it's certainly cute and funny, it also touches on some pretty controversial and complex themes such as religious ostracism and teen pregnancy. The story concerns Mary Cummings, a senior at a Christian high school who suddenly finds herself pregnant and subsequently demonised and shunned by the religious community. Saved conveys a unique and rewarding story that is biting and fiercely satiric in its approach to religious intolerance. You're an exorcist! Yes, get off me! Hey, Perry, you've got to get rid of the evil in you. It's God's will. It's a movie about proper Christian values and the virtues of love and acceptance, and it's masked by a heartwarming and hilarious high school comedy. If only all teen movies could be this smart. There's no room for moral ambiguity here. Bible is very clear about this. So everything that doesn't fit into some stupid idea of what you think God wants, you just try to hide or fix or get rid of? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.